thing was my idea. It's not that he's resentful or mean, he's just forgetful. <laughs> but years ago, it might be seven, might even be eight or more years ago, I suggested to, um, I asked Ronnie Howard if he fancied the idea of making a screenplay of his play Quartet, which I'd, <coughs> I'd seen some years before, and just remembered how moving it was at the end. Anyway, he was very excited, and the BBC Film Commission the screenplay, and uh, nothing happened till Dustin came along. But there was also this documentary, which I think was part of Ronnie's uh, inspiration. Go ahead. I just wanted to back up uh, that uh, Tom uh, and uh, Albert Finney met uh, uh, Ron Harwood on The Dresser, yes? Yeah, yeah. And that's how yeah. it started. So the documentary, which Tosca's uh, Kiss? Yes. Do you mind if I take my coat off? <laughs> I'm, I'm going through a menopause. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few flashes. Uh, the, the, it's a wonderful documentary. It's called Tosca's Kiss. And uh, Mr. Harwood told me about it when I asked him what the, the genesis was. And uh, it... Uh, it, it was made in 1983, and uh, Verdi, uh, rich and successful, uh, toward the end of his life, decided to build a mansion for himself in Milan where he lived, and he stipulated that when he died, uh, that opera singers and, and uh, musicians, because he knew so many who were no longer uh, at, you know, playing at La Scala, and some were you know, poor, could live there. So you can find it. It's called it's called Tosca's Kiss, and it's about these retired opera singers and and, uh, and musicians at the Verdi House, which still exists uh, in Milan. And, and you gave this film to to your, some of your cast to see first. I, I told them all to see to see it, and I think they all ignored me. Oh, no, say. I mean, you you, you yeah, saw I, it. Yeah, I you? saw it. I thought it was absolutely. Well, it was wonderful to see it because it gave you a, an inkling as to what, where we were headed and what we were all going to do. It's a, it's a very, very moving documentary. And the moment I saw it, I thought, this is terrific because if Dustin's on this wavelength, we should be safe. Right, let's go to a question. We've got the, the mics are here, right down at the front here. Let's do two questions, or three questions along the front first. There and there and there. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Maggie Smith, first of all, just a bit of information. Are you aware that there has been a sandwich named after you? Am I aware there's a what? A sandwich <laughs> named a after sandwich. you. Of course. Yes. yes, I used to. I used to. <laughs> Uh, some years ago, I used to attend the Venice Film Festival, and there was a, a stand, sandwich stand outside the Palo Galileo, where most of the press screenings are held. And the sandwiches are named after movie stars, and the vegetarian one is Veggie Smith. Uh, vegetarian? Well, that's it's a vegetarian one. It is. Well, that's kind of a relief, actually. <laughs> but my question is... Oh my God. Um, you, haven't you been resentful of the fact that you've been asked to play aging women quite early in your career? California suit com Suite comes to mind, which has happened 35 years ago. No, I And I, I always I, thought you looked exquisite and they shouldn't give you those roles. I, I'm, I'm just glad to get any role. The fact that they're all 90 is... <laughs> <laughs> it started because, uh, actually, we, it was Hook that started it. When I was asked, I think it was uh, Peggy Ashcroft couldn't do this part, and somebody was asked uh, how old I, wh how old was I, and would I be able to do the part? And the person re replied, "92," very quickly. <laughs> so I've been stuck ever since. But I'm actually very grateful. Let's have a question about it. I'd like to just throw in that it's not true, and Maggie's very modest. She's been offered quite a few younger parts. She just turned down last year a film called My Week with Marilyn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Yep, and then we'll come to you. Yep. Um, it's, a, it's a really charming film, um, but American and British cultures are different in many ways, 
and this is a very British setting. I wondered how the English actors found it working with a, an American director, and how Mr. Hoffman found it working with our grand British thespians. Right, let's start with you, Pauline, if you haven't heard from you. Okay, yet. well, first of all, Dustin is a dynamo <laughs> and a darling, and both of those things help, I think, to make the atmosphere of this film. He's one of the most inspiring and kindest directors I've ever worked for because I think he understands how actors work because he is one. Um, I found him really, really easy to get on with, but we've heard stories that he gives directors a hard time. <laughs> is this true, sir? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe now he knows what it feels like. The, the culture thing, occasionally uh, I would say to Dustin, you don't really understand what we're talking about, wouldn't I? Yes. And, and he said, tell me, tell me, tell me what I'm doing wrong. So I love the lack of hubris in the man. Um, there's one thing I, I think that maybe he didn't understand, uh, which I said, I said that mostly in my career, unlike Maggie, who I've worked with before, I, I'm always downstairs. And I said, <laughs> I'm always below stairs, I said to Dustin. <laughs> On the phone before we met. And when I tried to talk myself out of the job. Yes. <laughs> and he said, um, after this film, you won't be. He didn't understand. He thought that like I was below the title, which indeed I have been many times too. <laughs> but I think we begin to understand each other a bit more now. Billy Connolly, let's have heard from you. I forget the question. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was he like as a director? <laughs> Work with American director. A nightmare. <laughs> Tantrums, long silences. <laughs> Inappropriate touching. <laughs> You know the kind of thing. He was uh, excellent. I'll tell you. I mean, in uh, terms of the touching. <laughs> <laughs> He's an excellent toucher. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you the thing I like best about him. He, it's a kind of... I, I, I don't crave praise. I've had plenty of praise in my life to get along with. But sometimes it's kind of nice to be told that you're doing okay. And he's very good at that. Yeah. Can, can I do the impersonation when it was a good take? A gorgeous, gorgeous fucking take. That's in the movie. <laughs> Sher Sheridan. Is Nothing it. like me. <laughs> As the representing the sort of youthful part of the film, um, what are your reactions to working with someone like Dustin Hoffman? Uh, overwhelming. Just to be part of the film was um, an absolute honor for me, obviously. I being on set every day with these amazing people, I wanted to curtsy every morning. <laughs> I was so overwhelmed by it. Um, yeah, just it was just an incredible experience, and I tried to be like a sponge and take it all in. There's so many questions. Let's move on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, um, uh, Mr. Hoffman. Uh, so, why did you? I'm here. Why did you uh, decide to take a chance as a film director? And um, what uh, did you like the most in this story about uh, opera artists? So why did you, you decide to become a director? Can I ask you why you decided to wear a green shirt today? <laughs> uh, because it's uh, bright, uh, it's bright and I <laughs> hope we can see to, you. We can to, see you. to turn your uh, attention. <laughs> Thank it's you. Same answer. <laughs> uh, why did I decide to, uh, to, uh, to do this film? Uh, I decided uh, a long time ago, uh, sometimes it takes you 40 years to get around to doing something. Uh, and that's the truthful answer. We've got uh, two questions there in the second row. Daryl? A uh, question for Billy Connolly, just down here. Um, I just wondered if you were looking forward to an old age where you could say exactly what you want. Um, and I'm there. <laughs> and also, whether you ever said anything where you thought that was probably inappropriate. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Aren't you? <laughs> I've been accused of being inappropriate since day one. And, uh, and I think it's one of the joys of getting older. You can say exactly as you please. Uh, there's, there's not much to add to that, but the, but I, I have pretty much said exactly as I pleased all my life, and uh, it's done me no harm at all. Do you know there's a thing I really dislike when you say, if somebody says, 
what do you think of so-and-so? And, -so? and you, th you say, I think he's an asshole. And they say, oh, come on, speak your mind. <laughs> you know that shitty thing that people say? <laughs> and as, as if speaking your mind was something weird. I think if more people spoke their mind, we'd be in much better shape. So, uh, yeah, and that kind of answers it, I think. I, I, I wasn't just pretending to be old. You know, uh, we all know that these press conferences you take with a grain of salt because when is the last time you asked an actor how he liked the other actor or how he liked the director and they said, an asshole. <laughs> you don't really hear that much, do you? <laughs> but it's, it's true. <laughs> Phil. Sheridan, uh, you've alluded to being thrown in at the deep end here and you said soaking things up like a sponge. What did these illustrious people teach you on, on the set? What did you learn? What did you go away with? Awesome. Groping. <laughs> so much, you know, the, the film's so special and all the cast are actually um, retired opera singers and retired musicians and in between scenes they'd be jamming and Dustin's a great pianist, he'd get on the piano and it was just such a special film and obviously working alongside these guys there and, and the stories that, um, that, that they told me and I just I had to pinch myself every day, it's been an incredible experience. We've got questions all the way up the middle. Yes, start with you, and then we'll go up there. Yes, thank you. Um, Mr. Hoffman, uh, you once said that filmmaking was like some kind of magic. Did you feel the same way being a director? That when you get everyone together, it's very special. Do you feel that with being a director? Well, this is the first time I directed, and, and I, I don't know if I'll feel this again, because I think we all felt it on this movie uh, crew. Uh, and cast. I mean, you never know when you're making a movie. Uh, you know, you, no one is saying in the middle of Casablanca, this is going to be a classic. You know, the lead actors had turned it down. I think they wound up with uh, B-list actors. So, you know, you're always in, in a tunnel that, you know, you can't see the end of it. But there was something that took place on this movie, which I don't think we expected, and that was that once we decided that the an entire cast uh, would be real retired opera singers, real retired musicians. And these people, the phone hadn't rung for them for 20, 30, 40 years, even though they, they can deliver. The trumpet player, Ronnie Hughes, has got his chops today. But for some strange re reason, the culture doesn't call him because he's 83 years old. And these people in their 70s and 80s and 90s came with such verve every day and would still be shooting these 10, 12 hour days. And that in itself made this a, an extraordinarily special uh, occasion for all of us. It wasn't a job for the crew after a few days. It, it, it took on another uh, a tone. Thank you. Can I have a next question asked? 